What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how quarterbacks can throw 50-plus yards. We're going to be talking about three tips to increase your deep ball and some of the things that quarterbacks do that are mistakes that limit their arm strength. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a quarterback and would like to train with us this offseason, we are coming out to 15 different cities across the country for two-day long, two-day long QB and wide receiver camp. So check out that very first link in the description below. If you would like to train with us, we're coming out to San Francisco, Miami, Las Vegas, Charlotte, Portland, Dallas, Nashville, Chicago, Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. So again, very first link in that description below, fellas. We'd love to have you there. Let's get started with this video. So first clip we're looking at here is from Anthony Richardson. So we're going to talk about how you guys can increase your deep ball, and then we're going to talk about how you can throw farther on the run after we take a look at this clip. So Richardson goes his play action fake. He hitches up into this throw off of like this five-step drop and just launches the ball. Just monster throw. There's no secret that this guy's got a cannon for an arm, obviously, right? So first thing I want to talk about is your hitch at the top of the drop. So I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, when you're throwing like, let's say it's a four verts concept, right? You have a fade, you got your slot wide receiver running a seam, you got the other slot running a seam, outside running a fade. You're probably like, let's say you get a one high safety look, single safety, you got press coverage on the outside, you know who you're going to. You know you're throwing to the outside guy. So your drop is probably going to be a three-step drop, hold this middle safety, and then we hitch up to the outside. But on this hitch, so many quarterbacks make mistakes that limit their arm strength. So you see how Richardson, when he hits the top of the drop here, right? You see how his base kind of looks like a bike kickstand. That is totally normal for quarterbacks. But the thing is, when you hitch, you cannot leave all of your body weight onto the front side of your frame. So when he hitches up, you see how his like back foot replaces his front foot. You see how all of his weight gets to his back leg. Now, a lot of old school quarterback coaches never taught this. They would say, oh, you don't want your feet to get close together. And he's not getting his feet close together. He's just simply replacing his feet and getting that back foot located underneath his body frame. Now, you might ask, well, why is that important? How is that going to help me throw the ball further? And that's what I'm going to talk about. So when your weight is loaded onto the back leg like this, this allows you to do so many things mechanically. As a quarterback where you generate power, it is not from your arm. It's not about how much you can bench press, how much you can curl press over your head what's more important for quarterbacks is squats core work hip like you know like explosiveness mobility in the upper half it's not even about upper body strengths more so about mobility your lower body is where the power comes from but the legs set up the hips i'm pretty sure everybody can understand this quarterbacks were rotational athletes everybody's seen dak prescott do that hip drill and other quarterbacks do certain hip exercises because that's where we generate power we rotate from our hips but our legs set up the rotation so when your weight is loaded back like this and your back foot is underneath your armpit as i like to say back back foot under the armpit. That allows you to take this weight onto your back leg and transfer it to the front leg. That weight transfer or that weight shift is essentially what makes your hips rotate through, but you are not able to do it if you have a flawed base. What a lot of quarterbacks struggle with is like they get to this bike kickstand point right here. They'll hitch up, but their back foot will stop like right there. So when all of your body weight is forward, essentially you have already transferred that weight from the lower body. So your back half is not involved with the throw. Another reason why you don't want to have a weight on your front leg is that doesn't allow you to stay back with the football and rotate your shoulders. To get arm strength, you have to get to a position called hip and shoulder dissociation. Hip and shoulder dissociation is this position right here. When you take a step with your front foot, because that's the first part of every throwing sequence, fellas. A quarterback, when they throw, the front foot has to get down. You, It is impossible to throw like this without your front foot being in the ground. So when your front foot makes contact with the ground, you still want to have a little bit of weight on your back leg. You still want to have that weight loaded that you got to from your hitch. Now, when your weight stays back, what that allows you to do is rotate your shoulder and get to this position where your shoulders and the football are trailing behind your front stride. Your front stride gets down, shoulders are going back. That's hip and shoulder dissociation, aka separation. You want those hips to be driving through as the shoulders are staying back. Because what that does is that creates a whip. That creates a coiling effect, almost like a baseball swing or a golf swing. And that's how we generate power as quarterbacks. It's not about my arm. It is about getting to this position. And I cannot get to this position, front stride down, weight still loaded, shoulders staying back without getting that weight to my back leg on my hitch. So it starts with the hitch. Now, 
When you get to this position, like we said, we cannot have a long front stride either. That is something that a lot of quarterbacks struggle with is they will get to that position, but the stride gets down because they are pushing off of their back leg. But guess what happens, fellas? Like you lose all torque when you do that. Because remember, when that stride gets down, you need to maintain some weight on your back leg to get to that dissociation position. And guys, you look at any NFL quarterback, they have this exact thing. It's kind of freaky because everybody throws the ball different everybody's got a different body type but these mechanical principles Aaron Rodgers has Josh Allen has Patrick Mahomes everybody talks about Mahomes just, just throws the ball out there they all have these principles and this is what you should try to add to your game I'm not saying change your motion I'm not saying try to throw like Anthony Richardson I'm saying that you want the mechanical sequence and timing of his motion right so his weight's back he takes that front stride it's down a lot of guys like we said they love to push old school quarterback coaches used to teach push off the middle arch of your back foot but when you let and you push off of this back foot this way, guess what happens with your body? Your body shifts forward and all of a sudden you can't keep your weight back. You can't rotate your shoulders and you're just throwing like just like a pitcher almost like everything is coming through all at once. You're not hitting a baseball. It almost looks like you're throwing a baseball. And when you take this really big step outside of your shoulder frame, guess what you can't do? You can't rotate. Remember, fellas, like we said, our weight's got to be back because when that stride gets down, now what are we doing? We're shifting that weight. We take that weight from my back quad, I shift it to my front quad, and you see how that hip is driving through before the elbow and before the football. This is the magic position. Some people call this a C curve because like your arm all the way down to your foot looks like the letter C. This is where you want to be. If your back hip can be driving through before the ball, before your elbow, that's how we created torque. And that comes from a short stride, having the proper base, and having the proper hip and shoulder dissociation, aka timing. That front foot gets down, you want those shoulders and that weight to stay back. Split second. Now we're transferring through, and that transfer brings the ball through. Your arm acts almost like a whip, and that's how we can create power. Now, to throw that 50-yard deep ball, yes, you need power. Yes, you need to be in the right mechanical spot. Yes, you need a short stride to allow your hips to rotate. Because, fellas, when you have a long stride or your base is really wide or your weight is forward, try rotating your hips. It's impossible. It locks out. Your front hip locks out. Now, a lot of people will say, well, coach, if I take this big, long stride, pitchers use their hips. Why am I? Why, why can't I use my hips with this big, long stride? Number one, the longer your front foot takes to get down, guess who's got a more, more of a chance to hit you right square in the mouth? Defensive line, blitzing linebacker. That's number one. Number two, the longer the front stride, the longer the release. Pitchers, you want a long release. Quarterbacks, you don't because the longer your release you have, the throwing window is closed. And number two, you are throwing a heavier ball than a pitcher. So you need to get more of your legs and more of your hips involved, and you are still standing upright. Pitchers are throwing down. So it's a totally different type of throw where we have to use my legs and my hips. Timing is somewhat similar, totally different type of throw. So now weights back, shoulders back, front strides down. Now the other thing to throw a deep ball, right? Like let's say you're throwing this fade ball like we talked about on that four verts concept. What do you need to put on the ball? Should it be on a line or should it be with some air? It should be with some air, right? If you guys hitch up in the pocket and you go to throw and you leave all of your body weight forward and you try to arc your shoulders on a 45 to throw the ball high, it is physically impossible when you have a really wide base or when your weight stays on that front foot. But when you guys are hitching up into a throw and you replace those feet, your weight gets back. Guess what gets easier to do? Arc your shoulders. So now if I take that short stride, I keep my weight back, my hands go back, my hips rip my shoulders through, and my shoulders are on that 45, you are driving with a ton of energy up. And that is how we could get that deep ball. That's how a lot of guys get that ball to turn over so well. You know, there, there are a few different issues that cause that ball to kind of spin upward. But if you don't get to that shoulder arc position, your weight stays forward, you're taking a long stride, all your body weight is pushing through and we're not rotational, that's what causes a lot of guys to push the ball up in the air. So that's where we want to try to get. Now, icing on the cake, when you have that shoulder arc, when that front foot's getting down, those hips are bringing you through, your weight is back, you snap that release point up at the top like you are shooting a free throw, grabbing something off the top shelf, and that's how we get that that ball to finish with energy, spin, and consistency 
downfield. A lot of guys will have a low release point when they're throwing deep, and that's how the ball doesn't spin the greatest. A lot of guys, again, will put their weight forward so they can't arc their shoulders. That's why it doesn't go anywhere. But if you guys can get to the top of a hitch and you can replace your feet like so, shift that weight to the back leg. As you shift, we arc those shoulders. As we shift, we take a short stride like we are stepping down, maintaining your weight on the back leg, shoulders going back, getting to that dissociation torque position, like a baseball swing. You stepped at the pitcher, you kept the bat back here. Then the hips rip you through while on that 45, you are going to throw a much further deep ball. This is a textbook throw from Anthony Richardson mechanically. I honestly think you guys like, like I know he's a rookie, but like in the NFL, like I, I think he's got the best throwing motion. Like I, like I, if I were to te- tell a kid, like, ground zero has no idea what he's doing throwing the football i would say watch anthony richardson that guy can ab flat out spin the ball and again he's very very good t-shirt and shorts unproven in the league but just the fact that you get drafted it's you know like you're a pretty good quarterback if you're even on the bench so anybody who says that oh he's not that good not this like guys he's getting paid money to play a game like he's pretty dang good okay so now Next thing I want to talk about, like I mentioned in the video, beginning of the video, how do we create power throwing on the run? And it's honestly the same principle. So there's a throw from Trevor Lawrence. This isn't maybe the deepest throw, but he does throw this ball with a ton of velocity, good distance on the ball, accurate ball. And a lot of people struggle to throw on the run. They don't know how to effectively create power. And that's what I want to talk about here. So remember how we create power as a quarterback. It's all about separating the upper body from the lower body. They call that dissociation, aka torque. You want to try to create torque on the ball. So when you're on the run escaping the pocket, you got to get to that position to be able to drive the ball downfield with velocity and distance. So the only thing that's different is that on the run is you throw off of a different step. So you know how Anthony Richardson got his weight back and what did he do? He took what was the first part of the throwing sequence? He had to step with his front foot, right? So his front foot had to make contact with the ground while his weight stayed back, right? But since we're on the run, you can't step with your left foot. Because you have to swing the left foot through. You're moving. You're on the run. It's technically off platform. So you would step with the throwing side foot. Because you look at Trevor Lawrence here. When he steps with the throwing side foot, his toe is angled where? To the inside where the receiver is. Where does that put his hips? To where the receiver is, right? So that's essentially like you transferring weight or rotating your hips. And when your hips were driving to the target and your front foot got down, what did your upper half have to do? Your upper body had to stay back. So notice how when he goes to throw, he steps and he separates at the same time. Front foot's in the ground. Hips are going through. Shoulders are going this way. That's a position of dissociation. So now, guess what happens? That left foot kicks through as the hand goes through. That's how we generate power on the run. It's all about stepping with the throwing side foot. Wherever you want the ball to go, let's try to point your throwing side toes towards that target as you step and that foot makes contact with the ground. Let's make sure that we rotate with my shoulders back so that front shoulder is close to the target as I step. You don't want to run already loaded. Some people call it scoping the throw, like like a scope down a gun. They say you want to get your left shoulder to the target and run with it at the target, then you step. That's only going to cause you to rip open because you're pre-rotating. We want to rotate those shoulders as we take a step with the throwing side foot to give me that slingshot effect, that whipping effect to my arm, and that's how you could throw it further and with more velocity on the move. Okay, fellas? So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things, you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to train with us this offseason, we're coming out to 15 different cities across the U.S., all the way from Las Vegas to Detroit to Houston. So check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that, fellas. I'll see you guys next time.